Sound editing and design is one of the most important jobs in post-production. Viewers will tolerate bad video, but they won't tune in long if the audio is bad. As a filmmaker, your audio is an integral part of your story. We could fill a whole series of tutorials on sound design and theory. For now, and for the purpose of this tutorial, let's go over some of the basics of sound design and how to use some of the tools in Final Cut to start crafting a basic sound mix of your primary clips in your timeline. If you don't already have it, download the free 90-day trial of Final Cut Pro by clicking the link in the description. Let's get started. Audio is represented by waveforms. These waveforms vary in size depending on how loud the sound is. Play a portion of your timeline. Underneath the video thumbnails are the waveforms. These are the visual representations of the sound you hear from your speakers. It may seem odd at first, but once you learn how to read your waveforms, you will be able to see problem areas on your timeline. Set up Final Cut for audio editing. Show the audio meters to the right of your timeline. Click the audio meters icon next to the time code indicator on the right hand side or shift command 8. Increase the width of the audio meters by selecting the left edge. Click and drag the edge wide enough so you can see the numbers in the above audio meters box. Change clip appearance to see the waveforms more clearly. Click on the clip appearance icon. Click one of the first three clip icons to make the waveforms larger in the timeline. Underneath the icons is the clip height adjuster. Move the control left or right to make the film strip smaller or bigger. You can also zoom into an area of the timeline by moving the control in the clip appearance window to the left or right, or by clicking Command plus or Command minus to zoom in or out. Press Shift Z to scale the timeline to fit into the window. Understanding audio levels. Play a portion of your video with audio in it. Now it's time to go through more of the functionality of the app. The audio meters will move up and down. A good rule of thumb is to keep your quieter parts of the mix around minus 20, with all of your dialogue staying between minus 12 to minus six, which are in the green. We will go into why you want to keep your sound mix or the cumulative total of all sounds playing at the same time around minus 12 to minus six in a later lesson. As audio moves closer to zero, audio will be in the yellow, indicating that your audio is in the caution zone. The highest audio level you can safely go up to is zero. Once your audio goes past zero, you will have audio clipping and distortion to your sound. If the audio was recorded hot, then you will have clipping already in your sound. Our previous tutorials have covered how to record good audio while shooting. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will work on the audio that was initially recorded with your video. Here are some of the tools available to edit your audio to make a more consistent sound. Adjusting volume. Select a clip in the timeline. Right click and select expand audio or control S. This allows you to work with just the waveform. Move playhead over the middle line in the waveform. That is your zero decibels line. You can move the line up and down to increase and decrease volume. The lowest you can decrease your volume is the infinity symbol, which represents complete silence. The highest you can increase the volume in the timeline is 12 decibels. To adjust the whole clip at once, grab the audio line in the waveform. Move the line up and down or while the clip is still selected, go to the audio inspector, then to the volume control and move it left to decrease, right to increase. To adjust volume up one decibel at a time, press control equals. And to adjust volume down one decibel at a time, press control minus. When increasing your volume, you may get some of your audio waveforms in the yellow and red. This indicates that there might be problems with the volume level. These are the areas you will want to focus your initial attention on. Play or scrub an area where you have yellow and red waves. We will select that area with the range tool. Using the range tool. Use the I and O keys to create a range or use the range tool. Press R on the keyboard. In the waveform, click and drag the selection up or down to change the selected waveform volume. 
While the range is still selected, hit forward slash on your keyboard to play just the selection. Press Command L to loop playback. You can make adjustments in real time as audio is looped back. You can switch back to your select tool at any time by hitting A on the keyboard. Keyframes. When you change the volume inside your range selection, four white dots were created on the audio line. These are called keyframes. The two keyframes on the outside are the anchors. These keep the incoming and outgoing audio in place, so the volume won't change. The line on the inside of the two inner keyframes is the area that will be adjusted. Click on the line and move it up and down to change the audio. You can select and move the keyframes to adjust them or select the line of the keyframes to ramp the sound incoming or outgoing. This will make the change in audio more gradual and less abrupt. To create keyframes on any part of the audio line, move to an area before the audio you want to change. Option click on the line. This will create a keyframe. Move your pointer a few frames over. Option click again to create another keyframe. Move your pointer to the area after the audio you want to change. Option click the line to create a keyframe. Repeat the step again to create another keyframe. You will now have four keyframes total in the area you want to change. Click on the line between the middle or the inner keyframes and move it to change volume, creating a split edit or J and L cuts. When you have watched shows with multiple video angles, particularly interviews, have you ever noticed that sometimes an interviewer will ask a guest a question and the interviewer will be shown on the screen while the guest starts to talk for a bit before the scene switches to the guest? Or the opposite, the audio of the interviewer is still heard after the scene has switched over and you see the guest on screen for a bit. These are called split edits, commonly referred to as J and L cuts. They are named after the shape the clips make when the audio comes before or after the video. Tap the up or down key on your keyboard to move the playhead between two clips. Move your playhead to a video edit point in the timeline. Double click the clip on the left's audio waveform to expand the audio from the video. Double click the clip on the right's audio waveform to expand the audio from the video. Click and drag the audio from the left clip or outgoing clip underneath the right clip's video or the incoming clip. Click and drag the audio from the right clip or outgoing video underneath the left clip's video or incoming video. Play the area of the split edit. Create Hi. your next. The extended audio of these two clips begins and ends suddenly and abruptly. To make the overlapping audio sound more natural, you can fade in and out the waveforms of your clip by using the built-in frame handles. Using and adding fade handles. Zoom into the edge of the outgoing audio clip, or the outgoing video if need be, to see the frame handle. Click and drag the handle in the clip to the left until it lines up with the beginning of the incoming audio clip. A line will appear inside the audio clip as you drag. This line is the duration and the fade effect on your clip. A time duration box will appear as you drag, showing how long the fade effect takes to complete. Select and right-click the frame handle of the clip to change the fade type. Repeat the steps above for the incoming audio clip underneath, except move the frame handle right until it lines up with the edge of the outgoing audio clip. You have just created an audio crossfade. You can also apply the fade effect in the Modify menu. Select Modify, then Adjust Audio Fades. With FCP 10.4.9 and later, you have the new audio crossfade feature, option T, which creates this in one quick keystroke. Conclusion. When you have finished, congratulate yourself. You have just completed your first sweep of sound design. To listen to the difference, open and play back your previous version of your project in the timeline. Then, open and play your current sound design. Do you hear the difference? That is the difference that your audience will hear too. Take your time to understand the skills and workflow techniques we just covered and practice what you have learned going forward in new projects. Soon, you will get a feel for the audio tools and how they work in Final Cut. 
your career as a Final Cut sound designer is just beginning. We will be covering additional Final Cut Pro advanced sound design techniques in the next tutorial. If you'd like to learn more about Final Cut Pro, check out the next tutorial in this series here. And if you're curious about everything Final Cut Pro has to offer, but you still haven't tried it, you can check it out free for 90 days using the link below.